Welcome to PC Gaming Tech Summary. I'm your host, Gamer. And today we go over another new technology from NVIDIA called DLDSR, Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution. Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution. Wow, okay, so we keep getting these new technologies coming through and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back to basics uh, because I started PC Gaming Tech Summary to help just normal people, everyday people learn a bit about technology, summarize things, make it easier, save people time. All right, that's why I started this channel. And that's, that's what I wanna do in the future is have that goal. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just help people along the way. Okay. So we are going to start just for a few minutes. You can always skip ahead cause I'm going to, ha I have timestamps so you can skip ahead. If, uh, you don't want to hear this about the basics of an NVIDIA graphics card. Okay. So what we're talking about is a ray tracing graphics card says RTX. GeForce RTX, okay? And uh, this uh, graphics card was uh, finished off by EVGA. So the graphic, graphics processing unit, the GPU, is like a CPU, a central processing unit. A little square, you can think of it, okay? A computer chip. And so NVIDIA sends um, companies such as ASUS and EVGA and Gigabyte um, and uh, ASRock, these GPUs. And then they put it onto a circuit board, the company, Gigabyte or ASUS, or, and then they um, put the electronics and everything, and they have certain specs that they have to follow from NVIDIA. They put the coolers on there, a cooling solution, so that you can have a nice cool graphics card, hopefully. All right. And then you stick that into the motherboard of your computer, obviously, and that does the graphical calculations, okay? So that you can get a picture on your screen. Puts everything together and displays that on your screen, okay? And on, on the screen, um, you have different resolutions. Well, for instance, what's, what's a 4K? Well. You know, what's a 1080p? Well, 1080p is 1080 pixels across, okay? That's a 1080p monitor. 1440p, 1440. A 4K tends to be uh, 3860. They round it up and to 4000 and call it 4K. Okay, um, and what is a pixel? It's uh, basically a square that has color. In fact, it's a mixture of three colors, RGB, red, green, and blue. Okay, and so that is basically, it comes from a picture element. Pixel, the word pixel comes from picture element, element of a picture, color. Okay, so that's what it's all about. Now, in the uh, these new NVIDIA RTX graphics cards, they have new types of cores. So it's not just one type of core anymore, okay? So it has tensor cores. And what tensor cores do is they do complicated mathematical calculations, especially like matrices or ma a matrix, like two ma matrices or matrices. Um, and that's sort of in basic school and mathematics, you, you learn what a matrix is. Um, if you've forgotten or you don't know, it's, it's, it's a series of uh, numbers like uh, 10 numbers across, 10 numbers down, you know, 
ends up being a hundred numbers. Um, anyways, um, the tensor cores can do these mathematical calculations many times faster than their normal cores, which are called CUDA cores, C-U-D-A, CUDA cores. Okay, um, in AMD graphics card, they call them stream processors. They use different, let's say, programming language for uh, that AMD, so we're just setting that aside. The AMD cards don't have ray tracing cores. Um, they don't have uh, CUDA, CUDA uh, tensor cores. They have stream processors, which, which are a lot CUDA cores. Okay. So, the tensor cores um, also do the DLSS, the Deep Learning Super Sampling. So that's um, a way to um, upscale lower resolution images to higher resolutions um, with stunning results. So the end result is that the GPU doesn't work as hard, creating the low res image, and then the tensor cores give it a sharp lick of paint before sending it to the monitor. The DLSS is powered by the uh, RTX tensor cores, by the, by the tensor cores, um, by tapping into that deep learning network. Um, so the DLSS is able to combine anti-aliasing, uh, sharpening, and display scaling, which traditional anti-aliasing solutions cannot do that. So what that means is, is that it's a type of filtering. So with the pixels, you can get like jagged edges, you know, like really um, a jag, instead of a straight line, you get like jaggedies, okay, jaggeds. And so it's a, it's a matter of blurring those jaggedies smoothing them over, making, and, and, and so you zoom into the pixel, you can think of it, smooth it out. When you zoom out, um, the jaggedies are gone. Yeah, and it looks better. Okay, so that's what the tensor cores do. And that is part of um, artificial intelligence, um, AI, artificial intelligence, um, and deep deep learning, so um, the tensor cores can be used to help um, estimate, uh, predict uh, things. Um, so that's where the artificial intelligence um, comes in and the learning, um, the prediction of, of things. So now, besides that, we've got ray tracing cores. Okay, and what is that about? RT, ray tracing, RTX. Well, that has to do with the lighting of the uh, image. Light rays, okay? And um, the ray tracing cores calculate the effects of light rays bouncing around a scene in real time. And they allow um, programmers, artists, to use ray traced re rendering to create environments with physically accurate lighting and photorealistic effects. Well, what is rendering? Well, that's the process of uh, taking an outline image and using color and shading to make it appear like a solid um, three-dimensional object. Okay, so um, the relatively low performance real-time ray tracing cores in RTX cards also put out a rather grainy, noisy picture. And the tensor cores can rapidly denoise the image to give it a pristine picture as well as a high resolution one. And um, other applications, other, other uh, programs, um, are sure to make use of these tensor cores um, and uh, example for voice um, that can be used uh, to remove background noise from a live audio feed. 
Yeah. So the last type of cores in the, the RTX cards are the CUDA cores. Okay, and there's, for instance, in this one, there's 3,584 CUDA cores. Okay, and, and all of these cores run in parallel, okay? So you've got a core here and a core here, right? And they send the information straight through. They don't interact, okay? Um, and uh, um, this has 3,584 CUDA cores. It's got 28 ray tracing cores um, and 112 tensor cores. So there's a lot of cores in here. Like in my CPU, I've got four cores and eight threads. A thread is just, just uh, think of it as a pipe coming out of the core. So you got one core. Um, and you got two pipes coming out, so that's four cores and eight threads. So, um, so it's very complicated, um, and the price of these has gone up because um, you know this cryptocurrency about Bitcoin and all that, it's, it's Ethereum and all that. For some reason, they decided to use graphics cards to create these this digital. I don't know. And so they're buying hundreds of thousands of these to do that. So that's why they've gone up. So at the end of this year, right, there's going to be a, a, a new version of the graphics card from NVIDIA. They call it the 4000 series. This is 3000 series. This is 3060. 30, 60, 12 gigabytes. It's got 12 gigabytes of memory, okay? And even though this is, at the moment, this is um, at the bottom of the 3000 series, it's still a powerful graphics card. I do 4K gaming on it every day, okay? So it is quite a powerful card, um, and you don't need to spend $4,000 on a graphics card. But I would say if you want to buy a card or save for a card at the end of this year, you know, try and save a thousand dollars, thousand US dollars, thousand New Zealand dollars, whatever. And then have a look at um, trying to get a card at that stage. Um, so there's bound to be, you know, improvements um, and, and things like that. So if you can't get a card now, um, well, you know, just try to plan for the future, see, see if it happens. And um, we just can't predict the future anymore, you know. We don't know what's going to happen in this world. So prices could go up, go down, who knows, all right? So, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's the, the basics of the, um, the graphics card, the ray tracing RTX NVIDIA. All right, so... I did a video recently, right, of another NVIDIA new technology called NIS, right? NVIDIA Image Scaling, rendering games at a lower image resolution and then upscaling. Okay, so all of this can be quite confusing. Um, I don't know if I have one technology turned on, if another one will interfere or they'll complement or have no effect on each other or what. Um, so, um, this is the way I'm looking at it today, okay? So I did a video on NIS, right? And with that, um, I think that's good for a game like... Uh, possibly like um, Cyberpunk 2077, okay? Now, I have that game. I haven't played it much. I have gotten to the part where you can drive a car through the city, and I guess it's similar to Grand Theft Auto, which, sorry, I haven't played that one. Neat. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it seems to have a lot of the same elements, and it is an, an adult game. Uh, I wouldn't advise it for kids by any means. I think the NIS, NVIDIA Image Scaling, is good for Cyberpunk 2077. Um, it's sort of when you're walking around, um, it's got ray I've got ray tracing in there, um, um, medium uh, ray tracing. 
um, Shadows um, and uh, DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, smoothing things out and accelerating the frame rates. Um, and, uh, and so I'm sitting, you know, just above, say, 60 FPS, but, you know, you hop in a car and you start driving around, there's, you know, it's having to draw so much stuff that I think, you know, it, the frame rates drop a bit. I can still play the game, it's no problem. But um, by using the NIS, I can get the frame rates up a little bit. Um, so, so I go into the resolution, in the, into the graphical settings in the game, and then I, I select a slightly lower resolution, um, and then it gives me um, better frames per second. Okay, um, so it's sort of the exact opposite thing from my understanding from playing with this today of the DLDSR. Okay, so for instance, Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in fact, which I've been playing today, experimenting with it. So I, I've actually got both NIS activated and the N and the DLDSR activated. Okay, so I can switch between games and um, I just want to have them on and, and then let, uh, let it figure out what it wants to do. You know, because this technology is very complicated and I don't know if they're, you know, we're just going to live and learn about it, you know, whether things are going to complement or hurt each other, whatever. So, yeah, so I sit to a higher resolution. So my native resolution is the 3,820. Um, we call it 4K, right? And now I just bump that up. And the colors are brighter. And that's the one thing I've noticed, like orange, oranger, and brighter. It just, it, it just looks better. And um, so I've, and I've got extra frames there. You know, I'm way over 60 frames per second. So I can do that and, and, and lose a few frames per second. It's no problem. Uh, as long as I'm above 60, well, that's perfect. If it's slightly below 60, it's no big deal. I don't, I don't really notice it, you know, when you're playing the game. If it's 55 or 60, you don't, you don't really notice that kind of um, difference. So, um, so that's it. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, we're going to go through that, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I found. But everything's time-stamped, and um, I think it's about time we get into it. We are going to go to the system tray, where you see the black and green box. It says NVIDIA settings, right-click, NVIDIA control panel. Okay. So um, that top one, image scaling, that's the NVIDIA image scaling, NIS, that I was speaking about before. I'm leaving that off for now. And we are going to go to the DSR factors. DSR factors. We'll click that. Wait for it to respond. Okay, and now we have DL scaling. And we're going to select both of these top boxes, the top two. Don't... Um, touch the ones below that. Okay, just leave those for now. Click OK. And the default here, the DSR smoothness, is at 33%. It's the default. We're just going to leave it there for now. I did play around with a couple different percentages. Um, no big deal, just I think 33 will be fine for now. Okay, now we want to click Apply, bottom right corner, and wait for the Apply button to disappear. Now you can always restart your computer if it makes, it feel, makes you feel better. Um, okay, so we are going to go into Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's already set. Okay. 
Um, you want the full screen and exclusive full screen direct X12. You want all that selected. Um, and then if your resolutions aren't showing up yet, we'll have a look inside the game. Um, so normally um, for 4K, I would have it here. 3840, 3840 is the resolution for 4K times 2160. Um, I've got ultra performance um, DLSS going as well. Um, if I click over here to the graphics, I've got ray trace shadow quality ultra. Okay. So it is running ray traced shadows. AMD Fidelity FX, that's off. And I have a 60 hertz monitor, so I use 60 hertz. Make sure that's set. Um, click OK. We'll check it um, once we get into the game as well. Okay. So now what I have found is if I alt tab out, if I if I leave the game to go to the desktop, it tends to reset it to 4K resolution. So just keep that in mind. Well, I didn't tell you about all the technology from NVIDIA that's been released, okay? So I'm going to do another video, um, but I need to do a bit of playing around um, and figuring this stuff out uh, so that I can show it and explain it and everything. All right, so um, just subscribe and you'll get notified um, when that video is ready. Thanks for joining us here on PC Gaming Tech Summary, and don't forget, you'll be seeing me in the next video.